Every day when you log into ChumbaCasino.com, the ultimate online social casino, you get a free daily bonus. Imagine if you got daily bonuses in other parts of your life. I chose French fries over loaded French fries. I asked Stuart from accounting about his weekend, even though I don't care. I updated my operating system without having to call tech support. Collect your free daily bonus at ChumbaCasino.com now. And live the Chumba life. BGW Group. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Want to teach your kids financial literacy, but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash iHeart. It's time to get inside the Giants' home. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Giants.com. I like it, I like it, I and like it. And the Giants mobile app. Ooh, give me some juice. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's roll. Welcome to another edition of the Giants Little Podcast, brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York football Giants. Second time we're being joined by the one and only Matt Sims. He's a quarterback trainer. He's on Sirius. He's on a podcast with Big Phil. That that we big his dad, big Phil Sims. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, man, before we get going here, first of all, good to see you again. He, yeah, you've been good out to of see camp well. a, a couple days this summer. Uh, tell the folks where they can find everything that you're doing, whether you're on Twitter or all that, all that good stuff. Yeah, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, the podcast, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Sims complete. Me and Big Phil talking all things ball. We focus a little bit more, I would say, on the quarterback position, just given our uh, expertise and our background. Uh, but yeah, my father and I just uh, love the game so much, and uh, of course, we love also just the the friendly banter between father and son, uh, talking talking football. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a real honor and privilege to uh, to do this with him. It's been great having your dad back in the building doing yeah. the preseason games. Man, he seems invigorated. You guys get to hang out here. He's going he's watching <laughs> practice. It's fun. <laughs> it, it really is, and I know how excited he is to be back. And uh, you know, there for a while where where he was with CBS for you know, more than 20 years, it was, you know, I think it was strange for him to say that he was part of the media and he really couldn't necessarily like identify consistently with saying that like, I'm a giant, I'm rooting for the giants, all those things. But he really does enjoy just being in the cafeteria, talking to all the guys, seeing the players, seeing former players like Howard Cross and Carl Banks and all them uh, talking with guys like you about the game, about years past, great storytelling. And uh, yeah, showed up to do the show with Sirius XM with uh, with Bob Papa today, and you know, lo and behold, I walk into the cafeteria and there there's Big Phil, and I'm like, hey, you know, you didn't know he was gonna be here. Today? I did not know he was gonna be here today, so it was great. He didn't tell me, and I didn't tell him, and yeah, here we were in the Giants cafeteria hanging out. But yeah, it really is special, and. I know he's enjoying every minute of it. Yeah, you just got off the air with Bob Papa doing the serious uh, yeah. XM Giants training camp special. They do right. one for every team every year. Just let's start very simple. What are your impressions having been around the team for uh, a few days now this summer? What have you seen and, and what's jumped out at you? Well, I mean, one, just, you know, the 100 years. This is this is a special off season, a special season for the New York Giants. It really just kind of reminds, I think, everyone in the NFL, too, just like how special this organization is, right? Uh, and... You know, of course, there's great organizations throughout the NFL and the Steelers and the Cowboys and all that. But just like, you know, the Giants have been doing it for such a long time. You know, the Maras, the Tishes and what they've done for this league and for for everything. It's just it's so special. And, and for my father to be a part of that is unbelievable. And I think, too, just, you know, hey, season 99 didn't go great. <laughs> it didn't. No, but, no, it did not. <laughs> you know, I think there is that genuine optimist you know, approach to this season. You know, I think a lot of people are excited. The offensive line has improved. A healthy Daniel Jones. Uh, the skill group, I think, has improved that much more with a guy like Malik Neighbors now inserted into the starting lineup. Brian Dayball now going back to being the play caller again on the offense side of the football. So a lot of things, I think, to be excited about for this team. And uh, for me, being a fan of the Giants, just really looking forward to the season. Uh, good. And you hit all the bullet points I'm going to hit with you. It's just perfect. So I'm going to yeah. focus on the offensive side of the ball with you, given your quarterback background. Let's do it. Let's do it. So let, let's start with DJ. What have you seen from him, watching him throw the ball, moving around? I mean, I think if you told people, if you didn't tell people, rather, that he had an ACL last year, people would think he's 100% healthy. Yeah. You couldn't tell by looking at him. But what are your impressions watching him again? Yeah, I think really just it's that the, the ability to be super comfortable in the offense. And I think you really do see that in practice is that, 
you know, there is no hesitation with what he sees. The the as as everyone says on TV, like the footwork and the eyes are matching each other. And when he hitches, he's turning, he's throwing in rhythm. The guys are getting out of the cuts. The ball is exactly where it needs to be. He's throwing with tremendous power. He's throwing with cr- tremendous anticipation, and just being a super decisive decision maker right now so far. So the past few days that I've seen in practice, I have not seen any moment where he looked unsure of himself. Right? He looked like he was throwing with great conviction of the football. And, you know, not only that, but just, yeah, it looks like he's standing super confident in the pocket. Someone who's coming off of, like you said, that ACL injury and even the neck things that he's dealt with. Sure. You know, playing extremely big and strong in the pocket, which he naturally is as a person. And then also, too, the pocket itself just looks cleaner. It looks like there's more of a, of a surface area that for him to operate on. And then you get those tidbits of reminding uh, everybody, the fans and everyone at home, just like, dude is a phenomenal athlete. And he took off and ran on two plays uh, in practice today. And one of them probably would have been a 45, 50-yard touchdown because he took off and outran everybody on the defense. So uh, just excited to see a healthy Daniel Jones, reinvigorated, always, you know, just can't say enough about the person and how hard he works. So really excited to see, you know, him put his best best foot forward for this season. Yeah, I want to get to the offense line in a second. But final on, on DJ physically, I don't think fans quite realize – how well put together a person no. Daniel yeah, Jones yeah, is. Like, yeah. like, you know, we were joking in the cafeteria, you guys all call him Big Phil. And, yeah. you know, Phil stands next to, to, to Carl Banks, and he's, like, bigger than <laughs> Carl. Yeah. Like, people don't, like, yeah. just, I'm not even, like, bigger, like, bad big, like, frame-wise. He's yeah. just a humongous person. Yeah. And, you know, DJ, I don't think, is the Big Phil status, but... DJ is, I mean, he's 6'5", no, 230. He's yeah, pretty big. DJ, 6'5", 230. I mean, I'm 6'3", 215, and, you know, I just feel like there's a noticeable difference between, like, you know, my frame and how I look compared to DJ. You know, he's just, he's kind of got it all, you know, and I think the the exciting thing for, for me as a fan, yeah, you know, is just knowing that he does have a little bit more of a supporting cast for himself to really just build that confidence. Like, I know, like, you laugh a little, right, but it's just like, well, I laugh it, because we, this is the conversation we've been having for five years. No, but you're, I know. You're right. And, you're and right. It, it takes time. And, you know, unfortunately for Daniel, it wasn't necessarily in the time that he probably would have liked it to be at, you know, like compared to a lot of other guys that are thrust in the starting lineup and kind of have that, that room for error. But even Bob Papa made a great example that I think, you know, is really true. Like it's kind of like Alex Smith, you know, in San Francisco. Like we knew that he was good. We knew that he could kind of do it. We just didn't see enough evidence to prove that. And there also wasn't enough of a supporting cast or structure around him to support that either. And it looks like we're we're hopefully kind of getting on that same track that that he experienced in San Francisco. Yeah, then Alex Smith winds up a with first with Harbaugh there, and then he winds up with Andy Reid in Kansas City and yeah. all the weapons there and everything. Yeah, and better. ends up having a 15 year career, and we think very highly of him and who he is as a person and the character that he has as he was as a football player. Absolutely. Put the fans in the shoes of a quarterback because I haven't even asked you about protection of the offensive line yet. Right. And you've mentioned it, I think, three times in answers about the quarterback. Uh, I guess so, yeah. No, yeah. no, but it makes it's... sense, right? And this is what I want to get to. Yeah. So how difficult is it for a quarterback to be confident in the pocket, to throw in rhythm, to yeah. always have their eyes downfield, to be able to make those good decisions when, and this might sound strong, but if you watch the tape last year, it's hard to argue, you have zero confidence that your line can give you any level of protection because you have so many injuries in front of you. Yeah, and and, and I think you know Shane. We talked with Shane, you know, uh, during the interview for SiriusXM, and he Joe Shane. and, and Joe Shane, excuse mm-hmm. me, and he just you know he was saying that just the fact that we have depth in that room now, you know, really adds another level of just like feeling confident about ourselves, knowing that a guy like you know Stinney might be the fifth or sixth guy in that offensive line like that's exciting news for us you know Illuminor who is you know really doing a great job at the tackle position you know to know that Evan Neal now is you know one of our potentially starters or backups at the tackle position like this is great you know these are good things to have because all these guys are capable and have game experience and you know for the quarterback position we we saw it so much, you know, uh, just with so many quarterbacks that the the hits that you take early on in your career, you know, they really do take a toll on you. And mentally and physically, mentally, right? yeah. physically, I mean, spiritually, what, however you want to <laughs> say it, man. You know, it just takes away from your confidence to really play super decisive and just really be convicted in what you see with every single play that you have out there. And, and I think that's where for me, you know. 
I, I get really excited for Daniel Jones. And that's why I get really excited, too, for even the fact that Daniel has Dayball as the play caller now, too. Because, I mean, let's face it, you know, Coach Dayball, he, he earned this job of being a head coach by being a great offensive mind and by mm-hmm. being a great, great play caller and, and a great game manager. And seeing him back where, you know, he really belongs, I think is very exciting for, for all of us fans for this for this giant season. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? I'm Victoria Cash. Thanks for calling the Lucky Land Hotline. If you feel like you do the same thing every day, press 1. If you're ready to have some serious fun for the chance to redeem some serious prizes, press 2. We heard you loud and clear. So go to LuckyLandslots.com right now and play over 100 social casino-style games for free. Get lucky today at LuckyLandslots.com. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void or prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, I want to get to the receivers in a second, but let's stay on, on Dable. Why, in your mind, again, speaking from a guy that played quarterback, is he such a good play caller? What does he do well that helps set up a quarterback for success? Well, I think one of the things that's really interesting about him is that he does a great job of understanding kind of just what it takes to win, right, given the team that he has built. So, I mean, let's just take Buffalo, for example. I mean, there he is in Buffalo with a young quarterback, and everyone's thinking, let's let's run the football more. Let's win at the line of scrimmage. Let's protect the football. Let's protect our young quarterback. And what does he do? He goes out there and he throws it 30, 40 times, you know, like two or three weeks in a row with First a young quarterback. First down passes all First day. down, third mm-hmm. down. It didn't matter. We were throwing it. And, and I think it's kind of one of those things where it's just like, he believed in in what he put in conceptually for his offense for those few weeks, and it was successful, and it worked, and it also helped Josh Allen really build that confidence within himself to continue continue to do that and put the team essentially on his back. So I think you know Coach Dayball just having the understanding of you know really utilizing what his players do extremely well, consistently being creative, and then really honestly just you know having that ownership of it, I think is really important. You know, instead of being able to say, ah, you should have called this instead of that, you know, now it's like, man, you know, yeah, maybe I should have called that. But now you're really going to put more of an effort of like feeling super confident in like what it is that you're doing, what plays you're executing, what plays that you're installing to get your guys open each and every play. And, uh, you know, with the young receiver core, he's got a lot of work ahead of him, obviously, to, to make sure that he's not overwhelming them. But at the same time, I do have complete faith that he has the ability to do that and to really make that bridge that gap between his veteran and younger players for now. Citizens is proud to bring the Giants 100 season celebration to the Queens Night Market on Saturday, August 17th, and the Tottenville Staten Island branch on Monday, August 19th. Meet Giants legends, win tickets to the home opener, and more. Get the details at citizensbank.com slash Giants. So I think it's interesting, Matt. I want to talk to you about what a difference the play calling part can make, right? Because yeah. the system's the same. This is the same system that's been in the last two years. It was right. Dable, it was always Dable's offense. It's always Dable's came offense. In. Yep. He had a little wrinkles. Like you talked to, and this is how I know it because I talked to the guys that got it from Buffalo like a year later, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Yeah, it's the same, but there, we definitely see some of the wrinkles that Kafka brought in." Right. But it was always Dable's system. What difference can having a different voice maybe in some of those offensive meeting rooms, telling the quarterbacks what to focus on, combined? With maybe the rhythm you call plays, the timing and sequencing of your plays, how much of a difference can that change make, even if the base offensive system is still the same? Yeah, and this is where it, every year is different, right? Every team and its roster is slightly different. So what you do really will kind of vary on just like what those individuals do best, right? Mm-hmm. For you to execute efficiently, consistently. And most offenses, I feel like, really don't know what their identity is until probably like week five or six of the NFL season. Yeah, two. I know that. And even sometimes later than that, you know, even the Kansas City Chiefs is a great example of that. Like they didn't really know what the hell they were until like week 12 or 13 of the season. You know, now they still won the Super Bowl, but still like you do have to kind of go through those growing pains. And I think with Dayball being in the room with the quarterbacks, you know, now it's not like, well, this is what Kask is saying, and, and then Dayball is kind of all right, throwing his two cents in there to to his offense or to his recipe. Now you really are hearing it from the chef. Like, no, this is how we're going to make it. This is how I want you to execute it. You know, I know this might be a difficult throw here, but I'm just telling you, have conviction, make the throw, get it done. 
you know, and I think those things are very empowering for, for football mm, players, okay. right? To be able to say like, there is one voice and one opinion you have to worry about, and that's the head coach or our, our offensive coordinator. He's in the room with me every single day, and you really do start to build that that connection. I mean, if we we spend every day after practice doing this show, after a year or two, we would have a great rapport with each other. We would be able to finish each other's sentences, and that's really how you have to be when you're a coach quarterback connection. All right, now let's give to the third part of the kind of the supporting cast. We talked yeah. about protection. We talked about the coaching. Yeah. Now let's talk about the targets. Let's do it. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's be honest. We've talked about the offensive line, but since Daniel Jones has been here, Darius Slayton's been his number one wide receiver. Right. And I think on most teams, Slayton's a two or a three, right, based on his numbers, the type of player that he is. Really good player, reliable receiver, but he doesn't profile as a traditional number one in an offense, right? right. Malik Neighbors, on the other hand, yeah, yeah. profiles as a one. Yes. So how does that make things, besides the obvious, how does that make things easier for a quarterback just even in his decision-making process when he goes back to pass, when you have a guy like that that you know if you're playing man again, he, he's going to win pretty much every time. Right, and th- this just goes back to like even like the stories that my father would tell me about you know, just Mark Bavaro and like his aspect and his impact on the football team. You know, that Parcells would say, like, yeah, hey, I know Bavaro's covered here, but still throw it to him because he's open even when he's covered. And I think that's something that should be refreshing for Dayball and for Daniel Jones too, is that Malik Nambers has really shown throughout his career at LSU that even when he is extremely covered, like well covered down the field, if you give him the opportunity, more than not, he's going to come down with that. You know, I mean, as far as like catch probability rate last year in college football, as far as contested catches, Mm -hmm. it was like Roma Dunze and then him and then Marvin Harrison, right? And and like it was substantially those three compared to the rest of the country. So for Daniel Jones, I think he's going to have a great time. Like he'll probably throw one of those passes in the game where it's like he'll throw and be like, ooh, Maybe I shouldn't, and then a big oh man, all right. Maybe I my, should. My dude just caught that really confidently and easily, and you know what? I can continue to do those things more and more, and, and that's where I think players really start to kind of you know kind of fall in love with each other on the field that way when they have those plays to build off of. And I think Daniel Jones, for the first time in his career, has that guy, and by doing that, now you're going to allow other guys like Slayton and Hyatt to really build into those other roles and to play those roles extremely well. And, you know, I'm excited even for like today, like at practice, like I thought Theo Johnson really, really impressed me today. I thought good. he looked really good. He moves well. He's got a big frame. He, he, you can definitely mix him up with the formations and, and the personnel groupings. So for a young football player, you know, Theo Johnson, Malik Neighbors, you know, I think there, there's some really good pieces to build upon here for this New York Giants offense. Does that make it easier for Dable to game plan too? Because eventually other Hell teams yeah, are, going, are going to, <laughs> you know, you go into a game, the other team is going to do the old red sharpie on Neighbors, right? They're going to circle on the game plan, focus on him. Yeah. Does that then make it easier for Dable to attack that team knowing that, they're going to be focused on neighbors. Yeah, and, and you know, and sometimes too, you know, it, it it goes both ways, right? Where it's like, all right, let's be creative to get our guy the ball. Of course. And then there's the times where like it doesn't matter. We're just gonna give our guy the ball, and we're still gonna get it done. You know, and and this is where like I think Kyle Shanahan really taught me this when we were in Atlanta with Julio Jones, and you see him now too in San Francisco with Debo Samuel. Is that yeah? They don't necessarily throw him the traditional like let's get him open on an in cut or this like no let's give him a reverse let's give him a speed reverse let's give him you know this little trick play or this screen or this and I think those are the plays that we should see a little bit more of in this Giants offense that we did not see a year ago which allows Malik neighbors in this offense to really kind of spread the field out more than than we've ever seen and I think the running game will be fine I know Saquon Barkley is a big loss but given I think your improved protection teams are gonna have to keep two safeties deep a lot more with Hyatt and neighbors out there Mm -hmm. Devin Singletary is a professional running back, and, we yeah. just, and, we'll, and we'll see about the Tyrone Tracy injury. We don't have any more details on that from today. Right, Terrible right. to see. Yeah. But I think the running game for a coach that I think, like to your point earlier from Buffalo, wants to throw to set up the run, right? This, he's not yeah. a run to set up the pass type of guy. He's the opposite. I think Singletary is going to be more than fine to run this offense the way he wants to run it. Yeah, and I think Eric Gray has looked really good. You yeah. know, for the few days that I've been here at camp and what I saw in the preseason game too, he looks like he's playing super confident football. It seems like he's getting downhill with like simple, you know, cuts extremely fast. He's low to the ground. He's compact player. He does a good job of catching out of the backfield too. So I feel like there there's enough pieces here for this offense to really start to, you know, create a real identity. And that really was, I think, 
the the issue the past few years is like what was the identity of the offense you know it's like oh saquon barkley it's all right that's great but like with a struggling offensive line and no weapons on the outside and playing from behind all the time and playing from behind it's like how can we utilize one of the better running backs in the nfl so you know hopefully a little bit more dispersed offense a little more evenly you know distributed football uh the protection again you know now we'll see more athleticism out of our quarterback which we know that he had has and is capable of and and i think that's where you know there there should be some really big strides for this football team and really just the depth at the offensive line position all the positions i think is is absolutely huge and veteran depth where you know what you're getting if you bring the guys in you love turf you're good at it so you start a turf biz business grows your savings grow become the most celebrated name in turf Are you ready for all that life brings? There's no better place to watch live TV this fall than Hulu Plus Live TV. Why? Because you get your favorite sports like football, local channels, shows, and so much more. Plus, get Hulu's entire streaming library with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus included with your plan. No long-term contracts or hidden fees. Don't wait. Start your three-day free trial of Hulu Plus Live TV today. Live TV plan required. Access content from each service separately. Offer valid for new and eligible returning subscribers only if available. Terms and restrictions apply. Learn more at Hulu.com. Final, sure. two, final two questions. Realistic yeah. expectation, you think, for this offense and this team in general heading into 2024? Uh, for the offense, I mean, I don't really know how to, like, uh, you know, how to, how to label it. But, I mean, hey, it, it's, it's got to be and it will be better than it was a year ago. You know, as far as the expectations for the football team, uh, me and Papa were talking about on Sirius XM just a moment ago, but it's just like, you know, what's the over-under? I would say that, like, you know, fans in general, we would be thinking eight or nine wins, you know, but I see this as a team that if, if we can get off on a good start and kind of build that confidence early on in the season and not fall behind too early, you know, this is a team that I think really can win nine, 10, 11 wins and kind of do what they did a year ago you know, two years ago, excuse me, and, and really shock some people because I, I wouldn't be shocked either if like the Cowboys or the Eagles, you know, didn't necessarily live up to all the expectations that we have from this offseason. So there's Listen. something, you know, going on in the division. You know, the Cowboys, they seem to be a little distracted. The Eagles, they always got something going on really recently. So, um, you know, for me, just again, being an optimistic Giants fan, excited for this football team and, and really looking forward to the season. Final question. We do a ton of draft stuff here. It's one of our favorite times of year. So we did a lot of discussions yeah. about the quarterbacks this right, year. Right. Just curious to see what your expectations are for those, gosh, what was it? Ended up being five first round quarterbacks, right? Or ended up being uh, yeah, six. Six. Six, right? Six, six. six. yeah. yeah Nick was, was the sixth guy. Yes. I, 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 I'm trying to remember all the guys in my head. There's so ama- many of them. It is amazing, though, yeah. What are your kind of expectations for the group and, and who do you think you're, you're most excited? for in their rookie year i mean definitely caleb williams I, I thought caleb williams you know i haven't been doing this media thing for a very long time but just like i was so impressed with his ability his command his his just the the easiness in which he plays such a difficult game and how powerful his arm is how athletic he is the leadership that he has in the football field as a young I love football this player accuracy i don't think enough people well, talk about the accuracy no doubt that too you. that too and that's you know so he he's definitely up there i was a huge fan of michael Penix as well I think, you know, the cool thing is, is that for all of us football fans out there, we saw six guys in their first preseason action look really, really comfortable in the NFL, did. like right from the start. And, and that's where it's really cool. Like these guys got a ton of reps in college. They played a lot of big games. They essentially had their franchises on their back, even in college. And, and I think all of the coaches from around the league, whether it was uh, Denver, you know, and, and Atlanta, it didn't matter. It seemed like all of them really did a great job of preparing these young men to play extremely well in the first week. And, you know, really excited to see what they do. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, Caleb Williams for sure. Uh, Jaden Daniels, I think, will absolutely thrive in Washington and really, you know, build up that that organization to where I think we we're used to seeing it and uh, and bring some excitement back to the division with uh, a well-rounded quarterback division. I know the Sims crew wasn't you guys weren't like members of the Drake May fan club. I was a member of the Drake. <laughs> I think he's going to be really good. So I'm curious to see. I don't once know. He I mean, I wouldn't the... say that, you know, but uh, yeah, I think I did have him as like my fifth ranked quarterback. Yeah, fourth or fifth, right? Yeah, yeah see, so he was yeah. my second. I, I yeah. even had him at a Daniels, which, yeah. which, which I know was unpopular. Well, I just, uh, from watching the film, I think Drake May is capable of being as good, if not better than, than any of them in that group. But I still thought that there was some rawness to the position. I, I felt like I there was fair. some inconsistencies as far as the way he looked in the pocket, 
you know, being set up to throw to the route that he was looking at it seemed always to be a little off at times. And his accuracy was scattershot. And he, was it, off, yeah. he was off and on week to week. And I think he was on a team, too, that, like, necessarily wasn't, like, playing for, like, championships. And they were kind of just, like, kind of letting it fly. So I feel like that allowed him to develop, like, some some bad habits, really. Some habits that are not going to fly in the NFL. We're like, oh, yeah, don't worry about that pick. We're going to throw another 30 <laughs> times in this game. You know, so... That's fair. You know, I think Drake is capable. I, I do. I believe that, you know, he's got that competitive spirit. You see that in him when you when you watch him and hear him talk and all those things. So, for him, the biggest thing is just there's no rush for him. Learn from Jacoby Brissett. 100%. You know, do your best to absorb as much as you can from a guy who's really been through it all in the NFL. And just slowly build into the position. The worst thing that could happen for him is like exactly what happened with Zach Wilson a year ago. Sit, learn from Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Aaron's hurt. All right, now you got to be our guy again. You know, so that really is, I think, the worst thing that could happen for him. Get him reps in the preseason. Doesn't matter if they're ugly. Learn from them. Learn to be a great pro from Jacoby Brissett. And then, you know, hopefully he can become a great franchise quarterback for the Patriots. Yeah, take your time. Especially the situation there with the wideouts and the offensive line is not the best. So I don't yeah. think you want to I mean, rush they're, out there they're, anyway. So. They're the same team, I feel like, as the Giants were a year ago as well. Like for this year, yeah. just they're trying to figure out, like, what what are we, right? right? And offensive line's a big problem. They have improved the skill group a little bit. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting year for sure. And I love the fact that three of these rookie quarterbacks, Daniels, Knicks, and Penix, they're all, like, 24. Like, yeah. they're all experienced, so you're getting... Hopefully, some of these guys learn where you can stay in college an extra yeah. couple years, become a finished product. Yeah, yeah. Like, if Daniels comes out last year, he's a fifth-round pick. Well, it's like, just... It's crazy, it too, out. that, you know, my father and I, we discussed this multiple times on Sims Complete, just why is it being more mature and more experienced in the college game a detriment now all of a sudden to transitioning to the NFL? For quarterback, oh, it should oh, be. Oh, he's 24 when we just had a no. quarterback who retired at the age of 45. <laughs> right. You know, and, and we're going out of our way even more to protect the quarterback each and every year. So uh, I, I'm all for it. They got a ton of experience, super talented group, really wish them the best. You know, even for J.J. McCarthy, you know, coming off this knee injury now, yeah. he played great. You know, excited to see where he goes. I mean, he's only 21, 22 years old. So he's experienced and he's young. So he's kind of got both, you know, aces up his sleeve. But, you know, I think all these guys really found great homes for themselves. And that's really the biggest thing. You want to see them at places that really appreciate their talent and want to help that talent build into the future. And, you know, I think uh, we're, we're really fortunate as football fans to have this young class coming up. One more time, tell the folks where they can find everything you're doing. Yeah, Sims Complete, available on YouTube, wherever podcasts are available. Me and Big Phil talking all things football and, uh, you know, him teasing his son about, you know, what, what fathers tease their sons about. So And I'm sure you uh, tease him too. I do my best, you know, but he's the <laughs> Super Bowl MVP. You know, he's got a lot of leverage on me. You know, I was just like a backup for the Jets, so I don't really have much, you know, but... Uh, you know, my father and I have a great time. We we enjoy the game so much. The game has given so much to our family. Extremely grateful for every opportunity and, and to come to Giants camp and to see my father there and to see all the people just kind of, you know, surround him like it's a campfire and listen to the stories and everything that that generation went through. It's super special. And again, a reminder, too, of just, you know, how special he was as an individual football player, how special those teams were in the 80s and 90s. And again, just how special this organization is, too. So, you know, extremely grateful for the opportunity to be a part of, of that story. You're going to drag Chris down here at some point or is he just going to stay in his studio? Yeah, you, you know, know hey, out? yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris is now Chris is the man. I mean, the fact that my <laughs> brother is one of the better uh, people in, in, in the media game right now for for football and excited. He's got an opportunity here for for college football this season as well. Too, oh, what for is NBC. he doing for college? Oh, so he's really? doing like the NBC, you know, game day show. Oh, is he really? Yeah, That's awesome. So I didn't know that. He's got that coming up, too. So, yeah, big, uh, Chris. Christopher is is doing his thing to to hopefully fill in the shoes that Big Phil left for him, and uh, you know the good thing is is that they know what they're talking about. They got great experience and they back it up with facts. So um, yeah, you know the Sims family is doing their thing, and I'm just trying to hold up my end of the bargain. See, I gave you a chance to take a shot at your brother, and you took the high road. That's, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that, hey, that, that, that's I took the Ted brother. Lasso approach. Man, yes, you did. You know, so <laughs> it's all good, man. Citizens, that's what younger brothers do. <laughs> that's the Giants Auto Podcast brought to you by Citizens. It's proud to bring the Giants 100 celebration to the Queens Night Market on Saturday, August 17th, and the Tottenville Staten Island branch on Monday, August 19th. Meet Giants legends like Phil. Win tickets to the home <laughs> opener and more. Get the details at citizensbank.com/giants. For Matt, I'm Schmelk. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Zen nicotine pouches deliver nicotine satisfaction anywhere, anytime, which means Zen pairs well with you, your personality, your schedule, and your spontaneity. Zen fits easily into your bag, pocket, and into your life because it's smoke-free, hands-free, and hassle-free. So the only person who will know you have a Zen pouch in is you. Visit Zinn.com or head to your local convenience store today to find your Zinn. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste. Or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products. Because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Kroger. Fresh for everyone.